Yeah, I've been directed to three different rooms now. I'm here to file a continuance on my court case uh, to see if I can get an extension. Okay. Uh, have you given the county attorney's office a copy also? It's for a misdemeanor? Yes. Yeah. Have you given the county attorney's I haven't given anybody anything yet. I have all the copies here. Okay. You have three? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we'll take one. The county attorney takes one. Yeah, I've got one for myself, so I've got four. I've got one for myself, one to give to, I'm assuming, the clerk, one to give to the district attorney, and one to give to the judge, I'm assuming. It's, yeah, it's us, the county attorney, your lawyer, but you're representing yourself. That's right. So your lawyer and yourself. So that, yeah, I guess that's I, the I have board. a copy for myself and everything else. Um, I did speak to... Um, Mr. Brandon Davis, mm -hmm. um, the prosecutor and city attorney for Dayton out front. And um, we do have him stating that uh, he had no objections to me filing for the continuance okay. due, due to the fact that what I wrote in here, he initially on my first motion of discovery request, mm -hmm. um, I was unaware due to the fact that I figured they knew the time of yeah. when everything happened there. Mm -hmm. So I left the time off. So he sent a couple letters to the Attorney General, which I have here. Mm -hmm. He sent them to me certified mail and everything. The Attorney General then sent back a response to me, as well as Brandon sent me a copy that I picked up this morning and everything else certified mail. It's the same thing. Okay. But he was stating he wasn't going to release the information, but they did say under article forgive me i gotta put my eyeballs on check getting old sitting in front of the computer as long as i have but under um Faith. Uh, no it was 17. oh yeah uh um, basically i can go here but basically under Under the article of 552.108 is what he filed it on, but then under Chapter 1701 of the Occupational Code and everything else, basically the gentleman stated in here, and I did call and speak to Carson with the Attorney General's office, and on these three items, he said typically because under these three items, I left off an approximate time, so he said at this time under the, the OCC Code 1701661A, in the instance that he was not going to allow them to to release the body cam footage mm -hmm. and everything else but uh, he said that i am uh he says he says uh in subsequent to be part of this requisite the record for record information does not prelude the requester from making a future request for the same recorded information id section 1701.661b so uh, I, I saw Brandon out front as he was leaving here. Um, since I'm in a wheelchair, we were sitting in the car, I was filling out the stuff I needed to in ink and everything. He, he stepped out, he said, hey Brandon, and Brandon stopped and he said, yeah, and he, he said, I want to give you this. So I did give Brandon a motion of the discovery, the new discovery, mm -hmm. and he said that he did not have any objections to me getting a, an extension because he was going to go ahead and send another letter back to the, the attorney general and request whatever but like i told him at this point there there is no detection there is no investigation and there is nothing that's hindering them from prosecution mm -hmm. due to the fact that when i came in here on september or excuse me october whatever date it was the district attorney and them must have already had it all planned out they went ahead and they dropped the failure to identify, which they knew was wrong, but then they worked out a plea deal. And then they changed um, the offense of disruption of a meeting or a procession to hindering a proceeding by disorderly conduct. Mm -hmm. And like I told Brandon, I was withholding all of this until the last moment and everything else. Under Turner versus Driver, and I noticed on the courtroom door downstairs now, there's a sign, and I'm assuming because my partner, Jason, that was in court that day, we were there as witnesses and everything else. We had a, we had a video recording and two audio recordings going at the time. Mm -hmm. So based upon that, um, we have evidence proving 
that everything that Officer Ibera and his sworn affidavit and Officer Tidell, that based off of what my attorney told me to tell you guys and to let them know basically was basically was the bailiff who made the arrest on me submitted affidavits to the county court. The affidavits that were submitted were outright perjury and I have conclusive proof to the story that they sorry about that. I have conclusive proof to the story that they told is fabrication. Uh, you know as much as the fabricated stories of both officers are consistent with one another and that the evidence that they conspired uh, one with the other to commit aggravated perjury. I will be, bring, be bringing verified affidavits with conclusive irre, irrefutable proof that the officers perjured themselves on verified affidavits in order to further false prosecute uh, prosecution of me in, the, in as much as you are pro a, a prosecutor as construed by Article 2.03. I will expect to take these take my complaint and present them to the grand jury. So basically that's where I stand right now. I do not want to accept their plea and everything at this time. Okay. And uh, like I said, I would like to file the continuances. Um, so do I just give you one? Yes. Uh, or should let me I see give your you all? copies because I have to file them. Oh, Same thing also. Writing. Okay. Yeah. This, see, this one I wrote at the top, that's my copy. <laughs> okay. Due to the fact that I accidentally went to sign in one place that I didn't need to, but this is go to the county attorney's office first. I thought so. If you go, um, I went down there first, and they told me to come up here. Yeah, I'm you need to go up and read over the language to make sure. Well, yeah, well that's what he went first and then for. And 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 Brandon also looked over the the new motion of discovery outside and he said that everything looked intact this time but he still was going to write a letter Brady, to the attorney Brady, brandon Davis. davis he was going to go, go down there and get him to look at it and i'll come right back they say he's fine with it and also um based upon the this year he says he's going to go have him look at it well, i was going to say based upon the michael morton act and the brady motion that uh that is what allows me to be able to do this.